Very rarely do I ever consider an anime that I'm not caught up on or that isn't even a finished series yet as a favorite or do I feel compelled to advocate for it? I might recommend something in the first few episodes as a passing thought, but I'm not very obsessive with it. I'm sort of, you know, nonchalant with the idea that, you know, hey, maybe check this out. It might be an interesting watch. The first couple episodes weren't that bad, whatever. But I was a little late on this one. And, you know, it's not that big a deal to me. But within the first few episodes of watching this, I think this has honestly made my top 10 and in case you need the name because this will go in the title but we're in beyond journey's end and if you've never heard that name or you know of it but don't know what it's about or are just curious basically what free beyond journey's end is about is about a mage named free Go figure. And her journey after her party, her and her party defeat the Demon Lord. As an elf, she lives far longer than anybody. I mean, <laughs> anybody is the right term for this. She lives longer than practically anybody. And she sets out on her own journey after they defeat the demon lord after making a promise to her friends her companions that she would return in 50 years and when she returns they're all old they're all decrepit and after only a few more years you know some of them disappear some of them die and it's only at that ending point of their lives does she start to desire to have known them better and not be a very sidelined character in their lives and she wants to understand them better and she wants to spend more time with them and getting to know them and it all becomes one big regret when she has to stand there at their graves and this journey that she goes on is a focus of that. She ends up picking up some uh, apprentices of these companions and their later, later ends of lives. And she goes and retraces the journey that she took with her first party to the demon, to the land of the demon king. And sort of retraces that and tries to find value in that time that she spends and get to know these people better so that when she looks back on it it's not just a moment in her long long life it's not just a fleeting minute or an instant it is something that she looks back on and cherishes and she knows the people that she was with Now, I can't say anything bad about this show because everything I wanted from it has been met. It has some comical characters, it has a very heartwarming and sweet story. And while I wasn't really expecting the fights, the fights are huge they're beautiful they're beautifully animated and they aren't so much about the fights themselves but rather showing off how you know trust how trust can change a character and you know it shows off their dynamic and it's just they do everything i think in free run perfectly they keep the heartwarming essence of the characters and they develop them so that they're not 
you know, the same characters when they first met them. And I think personally, Rerin does everything you want a story to do, and it does it fantastically. Now, maybe some people might not like that style of overreaching into, you know, covering every little thing, but Rerun doesn't do it in such a way that it makes you forget other things of the story, and it doesn't do it in such a way that it undermines characters or parts of the plot or anything like that. Instead, it incorporates it in such a fascinating way that it builds more on the story than it than other stories usually take away from it. The characters in Free Ren, I think, are a very strong point as well. Not only do we see Free Ren, who is very nonchalant, very indifferent to a lot of things, you know, that's not to say that she's emotionless or, you know, that she doesn't care what happens to anything, but as somebody who has lived for over a thousand years at this point in the story, you can kind of expect her to not be very emotional, you know, it's not something that she, you know, is very open with. But we see her slowly open up and talk more and kind of take more interest in people. Because it's one thing that we see very early on is that she doesn't seem very interested to know people and she treats the time that she spends like it's just a fleeting moment in time, like it doesn't really matter. And as I said with the synopsis, it is only at that ending point with her friend's lives that she sort of realizes that she wished she got to know them better, that she wished she had spent more time with them, getting to know them and cherish the time that she had with them more than she, you know, now does at the end of their time together. And that's a big part of her second journey is taking a step back and realizing that these few years that she's with somebody is not something that she should treat like it's a simple fleeting moment. Even though she lives for a thousand or multiple thousands, maybe even an, an indefinite amount of time as an elf, She's coming to the realization that the time she spends should be cherished more than what she has treated it as. She's very indifferent with the time that she spends in the very beginning of the story. And even when she picks up one of the apprentices for the first time, she spends years. I don't think it's years. It's multiple, multiple months on end for some medial task of finding a flower. And she takes notice eventually that the apprentice is not very happy with her when she is, you know, she treats it like, oh, it's only a few years, whatever. And the girl's kind of like, but a few years is a very long time. And it's kind of in these moments where people have to explain to her how lengthy of an amount of time that she's spending that you truly realize that it's indifference to the amount of time she spends is one of her biggest character flaws. And it's one of the things that she is constantly working on and trying to, you know, break into herself with and force herself into realizing and getting along with and not treating it like it's just one moment in time. And the characters are also not static. You get very good development with all of the apprentices that I've seen so far. And I'm not going to name them or spoil anything, but you definitely see them grow and change into characters that they weren't they aren't the same as when we first see them. When we first meet them in the story, they are not the same. As time goes by, as the journey progresses, they have grown and they have shown that they are more than, you know, just a person on the group, right? And Freerun treats them as such, which is surprising considering that 
the herd, they're all essentially babies. They are all basically children in her mind because she's a thousand years old. And it's a very refreshing thing to see because a lot of stories that try to focus on multiple things at once don't normally accomplish good character development, maybe on a couple characters. But when you consider a group of three, four, maybe even five people, you don't normally see great character development with everybody. Most authors don't do a very phenomenal job with that. And even if there's good character development, it's not very consistent sometimes. It's very off tempo and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel equal to one another. And Freerun does a good job at sort of pacing it in such a way that they grow with each other at a very similar and like synonymous pace. That's not the right word to use, but it's a very equal pace that they grow and they develop with each other. And I don't know. I don't know what else to say about Free Run. I don't I don't want to talk spoilers, so I suppose that'll kind of be it. I think overall Free Run is definitely one of the best animes at least of 2023 you know it might not be one of your favorites it might not be um it might not be the best of the best of the best but i think free Rin is probably top five of 2023's animes and it's definitely something that watching now makes me gives me hope for the future of anime because I've, I've been very skeptical on on new stuff because we just seem to have this big flooding pool of isekai that have names that are a paragraph long and they're all the same repetitive bullshit stories of power fantasies or you know weakling to the strongest and it's just it's very annoying to see and Freerun is a very 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 nice change of pace because while the characters are yes strong and yes overpowered it's not about seeing strong characters it's about seeing them grow and develop as people as you know interesting characters to watch and witness the journey that they have and i say that like they're real even though they're animated but you understand what i mean if you're into anime at all you're witnessing a story unfold and that's what freerun feels like you're watching a very refreshing story unfold before your eyes and I, I don't know what else to say it's a great story and it covers all the points that i ever wanted from something like this and it's a, it's beautiful i love it but with that said i think uh i think that's it for now <laughs> I might do another video when I finish it, which will be a while because I'm watching dub with somebody. So, and the dubs, I think at episode 20 and it's going to be at 24 episodes. I think, I don't think the sub is finished yet, but yeah, I might make another video when we're, when we're done with that and I suppose that'll be it for today. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.